This episode of the Golf Unfiltered podcast is brought to you by WorldwideGolfShops.com. Be sure to go out to WorldwideGolfShops.com for all of your equipment, apparel, and accessory needs. They've even got training aids. They've got all the great stuff from all the brands that you hear on our podcast every week. So once again, that is WorldwideGolfShops.com. You're listening to the Golf Unfiltered Podcast, your source for in-depth interviews with the biggest names, brands, and personalities in golf. Our mission, to keep you informed and help you enjoy the game even more. And now, the owner and host of the Golf Unfiltered Podcast, Adam Fonseca. Welcome back, everybody, to the Golf Unfiltered Podcast. I am your host, as always, Adam from GolfUnfiltered.com. Follow us all over social media at Golf Unfiltered, and you can send us an email golfunfiltered at gmail.com. Hello, as usual, to our partners and sponsors. First and foremost, to the Hackers Paradise. We're going to talk more about them here in a second, but you can listen to this episode as well on the THP mobile app, or you can search in iTunes for the Hackers Paradise THP radio. You'll be able to find it as well. And, of course, to our friends over at Cleveland and Strixon Golf. You guys know I've played their equipment throughout the season. We'll continue to do so. Love those guys, love their equipment, great stuff all around. Today, we welcome back friend of the podcast, Josh Babbitt from thehackersparadise.com. He is the owner, he is the editor, he is over at THP all the time, bringing great content to all the listeners of this show, as well as the visitors to his website. If you've never been over there, go out to thehackersparadise.com and get involved in the message board forums. Uh, Obviously, they've got a lot of great content, they do equipment reviews, They uh, broadcast this episode, they broadcast this podcast, which is a great thing, as well as a lot of great videos, tutorials, and everything else. But most specifically, Josh likes to give me a hard time about a lot of things, and one of them is about the topic that we're talking about today, and that is one-length irons. Now, as I go into the conversation, or as you hear in the conversation, I I have tried one-length irons at very briefly, one round of golf didn't like them, I am firmly in the anti-one-length club. My friend Josh is on the other side. He is definitely pro one-length irons. We have a great conversation today about the pros and cons based on where we stand in either camp. And you're going to want to listen to the end of the show because we put a little wager on the line here. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but a lucky listener is going to really benefit from this wager that JB and I throw down at the end of the conversation. So stick around. We're going to be right back after a quick word. And when we return, we'll be back with Josh Babbitt from the Hacker's Paradise. I know you love the game, even though it drives every single one of us crazy. Hi, this is Bill Hobson, and I host the Four Golfers Network podcast, where we celebrate golf in every way imaginable. You'll hear interviews with the biggest names in the sport, travel features, special contests, and we even take your calls. So after you listen to Adam and Golf Unfiltered, give us a try. Subscribe to the Four Golfers Network podcast. That's F-O-R-E on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Welcome back, folks. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we bring back for probably the 500th time, I think, uh, Josh, (laughs) JB, Josh Babbitt from the Hackers Paradise. Josh, it's always nice to speak with you. I appreciate you having me on. I actually think this is only my third time on the show. Is that really all it is? Because I know the last time we spoke, we uh, were together, actually, face to face. And that was when you were in Chicago. And it's only been the third time. I believe so. Are you saying I'm exhausting? Not at all. I just think you're a frequent flyer in many ways than one. (laughs) Uh, And you are currently at home, so you're in Florida right now. Correct. Uh, And I'm staying in Florida, but I am leaving town tomorrow to head to one of our events, which will have just taken place when this airs, uh, with UST Mamiya down at PGA National. Perfect. And I understand that afterwards you actually have a stretch where you're going to be homebound for a while is that right through thanksgiving wow that's a rarity for you 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 are a world traveler or at least a domestic traveler yeah i put on some frequent flyer miles for sure <laughs> today we are going to talk about a topic that you and i have been going back and forth a little bit about over text message as well as uh, you know on the thp forum and listeners go out to the hackersparadise.com and check out the message boards there And it's about one-length irons. And, JB, this is something that obviously is nothing new. It's a piece of equipment. It's a type of equipment that people are 
uh, that, that's gaining in popularity because people are seeing the benefits of it. But I, as I have told you, haven't really bought in yet. But that's really the topic for today's show. But just to kind of establish the baseline here, where do you stand on the camp of pro one length or against one length? I am pro one length, and we have a little uh, PTI thing here because you are against one length. Um, you know, we, we've gone back and forth on this, and I think we'll we'll dive in a little deeper. But I am pro one length, but I do believe there's some misnomers out there about why one length exists. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can kind of touch on that a little bit as well. Yeah, and you, you hit the nail on the head because I, I am definitely against one length. I, I just think the traditional staggered length or whatever you want to call it. Uh, variable length variable length there you go see i don't even know the I, I just i just know what i know at this point and let me start things off by kind of saying why i am firmly in the camp of against one length and mainly it's i i did have the opportunity to try a set of one length irons and as many people have said or at least some i, I didn't really like the ball flight throughout the set and what i mean by that specifically with the longer quote-unquote irons, meaning the four iron, five iron, and I should disclose that this uh, set was all cut to a seven iron length, which I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is pretty common, that, that length, right? That is correct. Okay, and so my the, the set that I reviewed, and it was actually the first set from Cobra that came out, uh, the King F7, that came out one length, that was all around the time when Bryson DeChambeau was, was playing them, and obviously they've had other iterations since then. But it just didn't feel right, and at the time I didn't know if it was because I was just used to seeing the ball flight in a certain way, or it was because I felt weird hitting a 5-iron the length of a 7-iron, but I, I just got a, a bad feeling around it. Now, the first time that you tried one-length irons, what were they and what were your impressions? Well, to give you that, I'm going to give you a little bit of a history on one-length. Okay. And probably bore all these listeners to death. But one <laughs> length is not new, so to speak. Sure. Uh, it's better, but it came out years ago. The first set that I remember was the mid-80s, but it really, the most popular set at the time was the Tommy Armour EQL, which stood for equal. Mm. It was designed by a famous club maker by the name of John Hoflick, who's a friend of THP. Uh, people know him. He created Tommy Armour 845s. He created Titleist DCIs. He created TaylorMade Rack. Uh, quite the resume. He created a set called Tommy Armour EQL where every iron was the same length. And in fact, they actually had woods that were all the same length, too. They were all 42 inches, which is kind of weird. Interesting. But uh, the Tommy Armors were all built to 37 inches, which at the time was the 6 iron. Now it's the 7 iron. And they were a disaster. They did not take off. They did not do well. Hmm. And the idea kind of was scrapped. And it was scrapped for a long time. There's been some small makers here and there who have made them. But it never gained mass popularity until Bryson DeChambeau, who, love him or hate him, does move the needle in equipment. People can say he doesn't, but he does. Uh, we wouldn't be talking about one length if he didn't. Right. And Cobra created a set and i know there were a couple other smaller companies he dabbled in like edel that created a set but cobra brought it to the mainstream and here we are uh, a few iterations later they've had a number of sets through different types of segments you know your larger game improvement irons to your smaller forge tech irons that have all been in one length so and that's good oh you know what context. i didn't answer your question well that's it's right so like how did you I feel tried the it? eqls and absolutely hated them in the 80s. And what didn't you like about them? Um, so golf is a mental game, mm -hmm. a lot of people would argue. And I'm a mental midget. <laughs> and I have always said that I thought growing up when I was younger, and I'm dating myself here because this was the 80s, that mm -hmm. I struggled when I got to that number that said six iron and lower. Um it wasn't the same as hitting a seven iron up. So knowing that all my clubs were a six iron length and I struggled with the six iron really just messed with my head. Hmm. Um, I would have rather them take the seven iron and done it, which is what they've done now, despite the lofts and everything else. And uh, gone with it from there. And to give people an idea, all the, the King F nines are seven iron length. They are 37 and a half inches in both graphite and steel. And, 
I want, and that's with the the Cobra Connect. Without Cobra Connect, you're looking at thirty seven and a quarter for those keeping track at home. Hmm. So uh, they they get this appropriate in a number of different ways. But we can dive into the tech side of it in a little bit. So your experience, much like mine, well, similar to mine, was that we didn't have a positive experience using them. And I should be transparent here and say that I have not hit another set of one length irons since the first time through. And so maybe I'm a little And you bit... only played them once, I believe, correct? Only one time. Yeah, I've actually I played one round of golf with them and I and I just wasn't pleased with it. And one of the things that threw me off was really the the, the weighting of the clubs, you know, and I know that, you know, weighting, launch conditions, all that, you know, feed into each other and I just noticed that in my experience the longer irons, again the 4 iron, 5 iron, what have you, were flying lower than I'm usual uh, than I'm used to. And the wedges, which were still the length of a 7-iron, were flying too high for me. Now, I don't know if that has something to do with my swing or, or whatever, but it, it, just, does. it just didn't seem to, to meld very well with what I wanted to do on the course. Uh, have you experienced that too? Or if not, what, what have, is there a benefit to playing all that, especially in the wedge game? Well, I didn't experience that. I had I, The long irons did fly a little lower for me, and that was the, a lot of the feedback that we had on the THP forum. Uh, we had some people who struggled with gapping, uh, from the five and the six iron on the THP forum and, and the, the feedback mimics a lot of what we had. Uh, with that said, a lot has changed since those King F sevens, the King F nines are a very different animal and they've kind of nailed the design here and it's only going to get better for what it's worth in the future. I don't want to talk about equipment we can't talk about yet, but, sure. uh, even the Cobra Forge tech that just came out last week that we have an article on is available in one length, and it's fantastic. So one of the things that they've been able to do is when you're creating one length, it is definitely not taking the same heads and slapping the same size shaft, the same length shaft in there. Right. There's a lot more to it when it comes to weight. So they've gotten a, a, a pretty interesting design where they have low CG in the long irons and it progressively gets higher in the short irons so you get a higher ball flight with your long irons and a shorter ball and a lower ball flight with your short irons if you're just thinking about it from the cg standpoint obviously loft plays a role here as well so you'll get a similar ball flight with all which is not something that they did incredibly well with the early versions but these latest versions have been fantastic at that they've also gotten the weighting right by having a progressive hosel length throughout the set and when you get the weighting right in the set, I always ask people, can you hit your seven iron? Then there shouldn't be any difference hitting your seven iron, your four iron, or your pitching wedge. Now, mentally there is. Mm -hmm. You have this – I think that Mike Yagley at Cobra Golf told me there was an idea that when they tested it, people swing their pitching wedge different than they swing their five iron. Right. We I would agree with that. Like, we would, we'd like to think we don't, but we do. Right. So – to create an iron where everybody's going to swing it differently throughout is not always easy, but they, they've, they've gotten it pretty right here, and the ball goes far. Now, we hear a lot of things where people switch to, lo to one length for a number of reasons, most of which, at least on the THP forum, is not to peg the seven iron, the single plane swing throughout, but because they struggle with their long irons. And they're thinking, oh, I'm going to play one length through the seven – and then I'm going to switch to variable from there. And in a lot of ways, you're kind of defeating the purpose hmm. because the idea is to groove one swing for all your clubs. With that said, I've been working on an idea of a two length set um, where I'm the same throughout through the nine iron. Mm -hmm. And then my wedges would be all the same length, but playing to a pitching wedge length. Which would make a lot more sense to me than the concept of having a pitching wedge the length of a 7-iron, especially on touch shots, three-quarter shots, shots that you would normally want to rely on a wedge for. Correct. So mentally, it makes a lot of sense. Now, physically, it probably doesn't because, again, it goes back to one swing for all clubs makes 100% more sense than what I'm trying to do. But I'm not the most logical person, so <laughs> I'm going to run with this idea. And I'm very strongly considering doing it for the entire 2020 season. Uh, I'll have a thread on that on the forum if I can do it. Hmm. Uh, I'll be meeting with Cobra to see if I can get this done and uh, what's the best way to accomplish it. But that's kind of my takeaway on the tech part of it. 
like I said, there's people who do it for the right reasons and do it for the wrong reasons. At the end of the day, there's no wrong reasons to try clubs. But I think the simple idea of I tried it, I had a sand wedge that was the length of a seven iron and it just didn't feel right. I think that would be the same as taking a club, for instance, okay, to make me sound more insane, I play two drivers. <laughs> right. I know that. Yeah. I play a 45 inch driver and a 43 and a half inch driver instead of playing a fairway wood. Mm -hmm. Why? Because a shot from 240 off the deck is a very low percentage shot where I, in my game. Whereas having two drivers, one when the fairway is a little more open, one where it's a little more tight or I need to play it differently, uh, makes total sense to me. Mm -hmm. One of the drivers is a spinnier head, one's a low spin head. There's a lot of different things that, that come into play. So if you're looking at things like creating your own bag around purposes that you need rather than purposes that exist elsewhere, it can make total sense. With that said, I do get the mental aspect of needing to feel right. And that's where the biggest thing I always say, take them out, play five rounds with them. That makes a lot more sense than just the one that I did, of course. Um, and you want that sample size, you want to be able to go out and get a feel for whatever it is that you're using. But you know, in my experience with the one length, it's always just been a matter of, like I mentioned, the touch shots with the wedges and all that, which is just something that obviously you would have to play around with more to get a feel for. But, you know, I'm a decent player. I, I, I'm a single digit, but I also feel that you have to be of a certain skill set in order to really get the benefit out of these one length irons. I, I just don't feel that and I don't feel that that's me. You know, we, we I see that the the guys on tour, well, at least one guy on tour who is certainly a much better player can actually get the best or the most out of this this tool set than perhaps an amateur. But at least that's just the way I feel. What's your take on it? Well, I'm going to ask you this. You said you feel like you have to be a certain player to get the best skill set mm -hmm. to match these irons. You play muscle backs. I do. Do you think you have a skill set that benefits that? I play a combo set now. Yeah, that, it's still you're still playing muscle back. You can hide. <laughs> you can hide behind the combo set if you'd like. Uh, yeah, and, and I will steadfastly. Uh, I, I don't know because I I know where you're going with it, and obviously people would think that yeah, you know what, you're not good enough for blades, or muscle backs in this case. And it, I mean, it's a fair point, but in the same token as you and I have discussed, I mean, play what you want, play what makes you know you enjoy the game as long as your score isn't you know, detrimentally, in, you know, impacted to a degree that is significant. You know, if I were to go out and play just a full set of muscle backs, which I have done for many years, I don't do any do any more because actually you talked me out of it. I, and if I did that and my score, I never broke 90, then obviously I'm doing something wrong and I don't know how much fun I'm having, which is why I go to the combo set and I can play four iron, five iron, six iron, even seven iron if I want in a cavity back get more distance, get better feel, get more forgiveness, but then in the scoring clubs have the muscle backs that I actually grew up playing. And I, I'm 100% behind play what you want to play. Mm -hmm. If it makes you happy, people should play it. However, if the goal, if your goal is to get better, you should play the most forgiving club you can stand to look at. And I can make the case that if you, you know, growing up when you were ever asked, no, People ask, "What's your what club do you hit the best in the bag?" You always said the seven iron. Right. Everybody said the seven iron. Hell, there, the movie Tin Cup had a thing about how far he hits his seven iron. Right. So why not have a bag full of seven irons? Hmm. Fair point. As long as they can get the weighting right, as you mentioned, as long as they can get the the perception of the player such that, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna hit this club lower, or in my case, higher for a certain portion of your bag than I'm accustomed to, and maybe that. I would imagine that golfers are pretty hard uh, to, to change, or they don't like to change. Nobody likes to change. Change is hard. Is it? I would argue that it is. I, I mean, it's it's hard. It, I think, this, without going down a terrible path, <laughs> I think as a nation we are very much accustomed to the path of least resistance. I'll just say that. No, you're right. You're right. And, and, and listen, there's nothing wrong with that. Nobody likes the ass groove on a couch more than I do. <laughs> um, but I will say, if you can get over the mental aspects of this, playing a whole bag of the exact same club 
would make a lot of sense. Like, uh, okay, well, I'll view it like this. If you were playing a course and every and you could dial in your driver, you were so dialed in this day that every time you hit it, you left yourself exactly 150 yards. Mm. And I'm guessing that we'll, we'll just make up a number say that's your eight iron. Okay. By the end of it, you're probably going to have that club pretty dialed in, right? Yeah. And that actually rings true to me because that would be what I would hit from that distance. Well, this is you have a whole bag of them now. Every club would be that. Yeah, to a degree. I mean, I I see what you're saying. No, I, there's no degree. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fact. Well, I don't I don't know if you're changing. Are you are you changing the length of the clubs while you're playing? <laughs> no, because the variable length clubs that I have do that for me. I don't have to worry about it. I just know that when I go into it, and, and from a physics standpoint, which is really pun intended when we're tangentially talking about Bryson DeChambeau. I mean, when I look down at a club that's a seven iron length and I need to hit that club 185 yards, I do not hit my seven iron 185 yards. That, that is a huge mental block to get over from a perception standpoint because physically, I mean, the club's shorter. I, I, I need to generate more speed in order to get that ball to my target or at least near it. And okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind here then. Please do. Okay. Modern clubs have gotten stronger in lofts, right? Mm-hmm. And what do you hear? Well, that's not – everybody's – yeah, you're hitting your 8-iron farther. That's because it's a 6-iron. Right. Well, you can still hit the 8-iron. You feel comfortable with it, and it's longer. You're saying to get the same distance out of that club that's one length. Yeah, well, no. What I'm saying is, is years ago you grew up playing muscle backs, and your six iron was 37 inches. Right. Now your seven iron's 37 inches. Can you still hit a six iron? It's longer. Sure. So I guess my point is, is like, I think that there's a mental part of it, but I, I think people are making a larger deal out of that than they need to. Mm-hmm. Yes, when you pick up a sand wedge and it's the length of a seven iron that does change things however if your swing is the same for every club in your bag minus your woods which i i think there's some notion to do that too sure um it should be all the same it shouldn't matter what club you pick up where does angle of attack come into all of this well it would be the same you're hitting the same length club every time and that wouldn't have any difference in or any impact in Launch conditions, nothing. And maybe that touches on the tech enhancements that you touched on well, earlier. I would say angle of attack is always going to impact your launch conditions. If somebody's steep, if somebody's shallow, things like that. But that doesn't change whether they're variable or one length. I, and you, I see what you're saying. And I guess maybe from my point of view. And in some ways they fixed that. And before you dump, jump into that, let me explain. Yeah, please. Um, the longer irons in these sets are more upright. And the flatter iron or the scoring irons are, are, are a little more flat. Okay. So there is there is a dynamic there, but they are all the same length as a seven iron. And listen, I get exactly what you're saying. Picking up a pitching wedge and saying, wow, this thing feels so long or picking up a four iron and it being a seven iron. Man, I feel like I really have to kill this. Right. I get all that. But after a few rounds, maybe you don't think that way. And you're literally just swinging a seven iron with at everything. And that would be as... And, and I'm, I'm saying this as a person who doesn't play them, but is going to. going to. No, I totally understand it. And maybe even the dual length or the dual... Was that what you said? The two length, the dual length? I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> yes, it's two length. Uh, but even on CobraGolf.com here, I mean, I'm looking at it. Just uh, They have a nice section on here about one length irons. And it's the whole thing about one setup, one swing. I totally understand that. That makes a lot of... That makes a lot of sense, and maybe you're right. Maybe it is, with as with anything in life, specifically in the game of golf, you have to go out and try it a few times and get used to it, get that feel. That that component doesn't change. You still need to have that feel component in the game. What what is? Do you? I think you do. At least... Uh, maybe. Well, you would argue not? Uh, I would argue that if you're hitting a four iron versus a pitching wedge, the feel's going to be different anyway because impact is usually going to be different unless you're a really good player. No, that's that's very true. But even in... So you're in Chicago, right? I am. 
have you spent your entire life convincing people that sauce on top deep dish is actually pizza? <laughs> uh, most of my life, yes. I've, I've tried to do that. But you've embraced that even though it's different. And the first time you ate it, you were probably thinking, this, wow, this is different, right? Absolutely. Well, isn't this the same thing? Isn't one length the deep dish of pizza or of irons? <laughs> one length may be the deep dish of irons, uh, perhaps. The one thing that, that concerns me a little, and I, and I didn't even think of this until you reminded me of it just a minute ago, about the difference in, uh, in lie angle. To me, if the, if the intent is one swing, if I've got variable lie angles, which I know that already exists, throughout a variable set but is it substantial enough to where i actually have to have two different swings anyway no um i that was actually my first question to the people who engineered these clubs was if the line goes that different am i going to have different swings anyway and the answer is no we're talking from pitching wedge to four iron you're looking at a three degree difference in lie angle oh, okay you know, that's that's not a huge amount. And obviously, everybody should get custom fit for these anyway. In which case, that could be altered. Um, I, I think that people, from that aspect, if you can dial in your 7-iron swing, you can dial these in. Now, people may not like to because they think, oh, man, what, but what if I drive it and I'm only 105 yards out? I feel so comfortable with my fill-in-the-blank wedge mm -hmm. whether that's a rtx4 callaway md5 titleist Vokey, whatever whatever they're using they feel so comfortable there they're going to spin it but what about those ones where you duff it off the tee I, I understand that on the internet that doesn't happen but in real right. life it does <laughs> and you're 190 yeah you're going to feel more comfortable with a seven iron in your hands or a four iron probably with a seven iron indeed so th that's my take and i'm going to i'm going to make this i'm going to take this a step further because you're a gracious host of this show. <laughs> you're too kind. I think we should challenge somebody to do it. What, to try it out if they've not tried it before? Yeah. Let's yeah. find somebody who's playing variable length, which is most of the golfing public, and challenge them to try this. That's an interesting idea. And, and the way that that could look is, well, they have to have access to, to the one length irons. I mean, this is clearly we'll something. We'll give them a set. Oh. Well, I'm the I'm the gracious host, and you're the generous guest in this instance. Well, no, I mean you're going to give them the set. <laughs> so we're going to give a lucky. So listener. I watched this thing the other day. Yeah. This is where this all came from. Okay. Because again, I like the couch. I watched this thing where they gave iPhones to Android users and Android users iPhones. Oh God, that whole old argument. Yeah, and the first couple of days was comical. These people. <laughs> The, both sides. This is the dumbest piece of garbage I've ever used. Blah. By the end of it, they were pretty much liking their thing. Both sides ended up switching back, but both had this appreciation for it. Hmm. And it dawned on me that one length is very similar to that, where everybody says they hate it, but most of the people who say that haven't even tried it. So let's find a person who's using variable set and let's give them a set and they have to post their journey on the forum and social media and update us for give us five rounds. Hmm. I think, I think it'd a, be fun. That would be a fun idea. And actually, I'd be very interested to hear that and to read it, too, because as I understand... Because you're a hater. I'm a hater of it right now. I need to be convinced otherwise. I need to be shown that I'm a metrics guy. You know this, JB. I'm a metrics guy. I want to see that, you know what, there is no drop in performance from a metrics standpoint. And clearly... Well, we can go a step further. Okay. These come with Cobra Connect. Oh, there you We're gonna go. We're going to see the data. Nice. Data is always... Which is, by the way, one of the best value adds in all of golf. And uh, yeah. I'm not saying that uh, as Cobra or anything else. That it, having it built into the grip is one of the best value adds in golf. I totally agree. And I think that's a fantastic idea because, you know what, listeners, I need to be convinced otherwise because, I, you know what, JB and I, we're friends. We talk a lot about this type of stuff. And, you know, he, we might not be after this show. <laughs> he typically doesn't try to lead me down the wrong path. I think he's trying to feed me a line here. But if you can convince me, listeners, whoever would receive this, that I'm wrong, I'm, I'm not too big to say that I, I'm, I'm wrong. Good, because I mean, you will be. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we Here's go. the deal. Okay. Let's make a wager on it. Oh, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to give a set to a listener. Okay. One of your listeners. 
And they are going, they have to update us once a week on the THP forum and on social media about how this is going. Okay. If after five rounds of golf, they like the set and want to make the switch, Mm -hmm. you have to play. I get to choose your bag for 2020. Oh. Oh man, we might have to talk to a few people about that, but we could we could probably do that. I, uh, listen, I can fit it into your sponsors. Okay, <laughs> you have to pick my bag. Now you're talking full set, not just full set. Oh, and God. I got the putter picked out already. Oh, great, wonderful. Now, it, what if what if I win? You can do the same for me. Oh, how about this? I I have to. You have to drop the second driver. I'll play the whole bag you choose. Okay. That's you, the deal. All right. Fair enough. So, so just Can I to pick recon- the winner to make sure they really want to do this? <laughs> yeah. You could pick the winner. Absolutely, 100%. People listening to this show are already thinking that we're both crazy, but the wager has already been set. Yes. You know, someone's going to receive a set of one-length irons, and they're the uh, they're the uh, King F, F9 one? Is that King what we're doing? King F9 Speedback one-length irons okay. in steel shafts, which I believe... I'm going off memory here, are the KBS Tour 90s. Oh, nice. And uh, we have them in stiff. And uh, I should say Adam has them in stiff. Right. He will be shipping these out to you once we pick the winner. So the way this is going to work is tomorrow, meaning this has already taken place. Right. There is a thread on the Hackers Paradise forum. You are going to go to that thread after you listen to this show. And you are going to explain why you think you're a candidate for this. Give us two sentences. Okay. We will pick a winner within a few days. And then we will send them out to you. No cost, no nothing. At the end of the test, you can keep the irons. Perfect. I think that works extremely well. And I am extremely excited to be proven right that variable length is really the way to go. Wow, this is going to go really bad for you. (laughs) Oh, uh, I still like the one length is the deep dish of irons. I think that's just a quote that. Yeah, they're delicious. And <laughs> by the way, the putter I picked out for you looks mm. like a metal detector. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait for the MOI on and that. And you're a muscle back player, right? Uh, partially. Enjoy your hybrid irons for the year. Oh, God. <laughs> oh this is going to really. I really can't wait for good. your handicap to go down and you can update the world on that. Too. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. How am I going to? Oh, you know what? That's just a whole other episode. Hybrid irons. Uh, I can't do it. Oh, I'm 100 percent behind those, too. We have to come back and do this show in a few weeks and I can explain why you should be playing those, too. No way. Come on. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Do you want me to let you in on a little teaser, please? The hybrid irons from Cleveland Golf have less offset than your muscle backs most likely have. Really? Yeah, you just had your mind blown. Uh, I, I would drop my mic if it wasn't. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I, I think I did have my mind blown right there. Yeah, I, so I, uh, uh-huh. we will come back and do that show later. But for now, this is what we hundred percent. This contest is up, and we will find a winner and send them some clubs and I'm going to pick your clubs for you when they end up loving these. Oh boy. Well, this has been a fantastic episode as always, my friend. Uh, once again, we're talking to Josh Babbitt of the hackersparadise.com. Folks, you've heard it. You it, JB laid it all out for you. Go out to the forum, the hackersparadise.com. You're going to see exactly what we're talking about. If you're interested, get involved. Couple sentences why you want to try to make the switch. We will pick one random winner. We will send this out these one length irons you're going to try to prove jb right and me wrong because of the data or the other way or the other way that's true and the bet between me and jb we the the winner gets to pick the other guy's bag for the entire 2020 season entire which for you it's like two months so you'll get over that's true that's very true and it's sad too but true all right, sir. Well, uh, exciting things coming up on THP. Anything you can leave our listeners with to, in addition to what we just talked about? We have the granddaddy coming up with Callaway Golf in December, the first week. If you don't follow that, you are crazy. Twelve THPers won an all-expenses-paid trip to Carlsbad, where they will get fit by the tour fitters, then hop on a bus and go to Palm Springs and play one of the nicest courses in the country Wow! and play against Callaway Golf. Oh, that's a whole team of Callaway Golf staff, if I uh, have that right. Yes, yes. So the live update thread of that is probably one of my favorite threads of the entire year. 
You never want to miss that. We also have some really cool things coming with stuff leading up to the PGA show with some of our favorite brands. I know you're a big fan of Cleveland Golf, and we have some really cool stuff coming up with their stuff Mm -hmm. that you were not going to want to miss. I thought you were going to say Skechers, and then we would have had to... uh... Had a have a conversation about that. No, but they you gonna have a bonfire? <laughs> oh God, I still have blisters from that. Um, uh, regarding the granddaddy, a mutual friend of ours, is he gonna be involved in this? I have no say in how Callaway sets their team. I would not even begin to know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, hopefully... I, I I asked and got the answer of we haven't set our team yet. Oh, so it's a mystery still. How how quickly does that get decided? Is that re- does that remain a mystery until event day or do? No, do... they usually bring it out about a week before. Mm-hmm. When th- this is a trip that the Callaway guys love as much as the THPers do, maybe not quite as much, but close. So there's some lobbying going on in the forum thread today. Uh, there were quite a few. Uh, people lobbying including our friend michael verska Mm -hmm. lobbying to be on that team he was like a politician in there Uh, (laughs) love the guy and i hope i i'd love to see him on there because our forum loves it but i don't know how it's selected he's fairly new there so Mm -hmm. i would say the odds are stacked against him but uh hopefully the the granddaddy comes back in 2020 and he can be a part of it at some point that finley guy gonna be there absolutely (laughs) the granddaddy would not exist without Jason Finley. Well, it's he named after him, inter- uh, from what I understand. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think it's named No, him. No, okay. <laughs> it, he's not a grandfather. He's actually younger than I am. He just aged worse. Oh. Um, Jason is the ultimate supervillain, plays the role on our form like nobody's business, even though he's got the heart of gold. But he sets up the entire event, and it is special. It's it's always a great follow and listeners JP's you know not feeding you a line here you want to go and you want to follow along on the thread it's it's fantastic and it's incredible what these guys get to go and do and experience all for the love of the game and and by the way they get to try out and keep some great equipment too so my friend it's always a good time to talk with you we will uh, see what happens in this uh, thread on the one length topic start searching for hybrid iron <laughs> oh, God. all right we'll talk again soon. <laughs>